Part 4 and 5 of the video tutorials explained how to use the variation blueprint to change materials for design schemes and variation groups. This tutorial will explain what else can be done with the variation blueprint. How to change meshes, trigger dependent variation blueprints, or use it for other interactions in the scene. The edit mode feature in the UI allows the user to target individual variation actors. They can be set up for individual objects or they can be part of the variation blueprints that are already used for design schemes or variation groups. A white dot will appear under the mouse if an interactive or changeable object can be selected. The name of the object will appear in the edit mode UI feature. Click the object to select it. Now a list of the variations will appear under the object's name. Clicking on the variation name will preview the variation in the scene. Both the currently selected variation and the preview variation will be marked in the UI. Click on the OK icon to apply the selected variation or click on the reset icon to go back to the previous variation. The UI will be locked to the object until the variation is either confirmed or cancelled. Only then another object can be selected. The name of the variation will be displayed as variation 1, 2, 3, unless a name is entered in the names array of the variation blueprint. Select the blueprint icon, browse to the names array and add an array element for each variation. Index 0 will be for the variation with index 0, and so on. I'll do this for the couch and then copy the names over to the armchair and foot rest. Don't forget to save. Now the names appear in the list instead of variation with a number. I changed the names for the armchair and the foot rest to match the colors they have. They will most likely always have the same material but need to be selected one by one. The foot rest can be set as a child of the armchair. Select the foot rest blueprint. In the advanced settings tick the child actor box and enter armchair as the tag. Then select the armchair blueprint and enter the same name armchair as the tag. Save the level and play. Now the armchair changes the footrest as well. The footrest could still be changed on its own. The variation blueprint can also replace meshes. We'll add a changeable light fixture as an example. Select the couch table and press M on the keyboard. This will set the current level to the one where the table is in. Add a light fixture from the UI3 appliances folder and place it over the round table. The cable is a separate mesh. Use Ctrl C and Ctrl V to duplicate the shade. Then replace the second shade with the cable, move it all the way up to the ceiling, and scale it in Z direction until it fits. Add a new variation blueprint to the scene. Use the eyedropper to select the shade. The mesh will disappear the moment you select it. Browse down to Mesh Variations in the Details panel of the Variation Blueprint. This is because the list of variation meshes is empty inside the blueprint. There is a tick box called Show Source Mesh that will make the original mesh visible again.
Add the original mesh as the first index of the variation meshes array. Add two more array elements to the variation meshes array. There are two other shades in the content browser. You can untick the source mesh box to hide the source mesh again. You can set materials for each mesh variation in the variation materials array. Add the three mesh variations as index 3 to 5, so you have six variation arrays. Then add six elements to the variation materials array. Add the black material to the first three and the silver material to the second three. I accidentally added the wrong materials. I'll fix this quickly. The variations will need a name to tell them apart. Now it works fine. Materials, meshes, and names are all linked through the index of the three arrays. The variation blueprint will set the original static mesh to hidden in game. Then it will add the selected variation mesh as a movable mesh. Changing meshes works best with dynamic lumen lighting. Baked lighting can't be applied to movable meshes and they will stand out in a scene with baked lighting. The TV can be switched on and off. But this is just a material switch. One with a media texture and the other without. The ceiling fan is a different example. Here, the variation blueprint sends the tag through the blueprint interface to the ceiling fan blueprint which in return changes the speed of the blades. The fan blueprint has a pretty simple setup of nodes. First it checks the name of the tag, and then it changes the speed depending on the index that was sent from the variation actor. This example shows how to toggle a light on and off. First add in variation actor and tick the box for parent only and call interface. Name the tag light01. Use the box scale and box location to scale and move the orange collision box so it covers the area under the light fixture. Add the names, light on, and light off, to the name array. Then create a new blueprint and save it as BP Light Toggle in the project directory. A double click will open it. Add a spotlight component to the viewport. Rotate it so it points down. Click on Class Settings and add the Blueprint Interface BPI UI3 Interaction to the Blueprint. This interface comes with the UI3 project. Look for the Interfaces section on the left side of the graph. There are two functions available. Right click on Change Variation to ID and implement this function. A red function node will appear in the event graph. Add two variables. A string with the name, tag. And a float with the name, intensity.
Drag the spotlight from the components list into the event graph. Drag the mouse off the blue pin and type Intensity. Choose Set Intensity from the list. Then connect it to the white pin of the function node. Drag the intensity variable into the graph and connect it to the new intensity pin. This will set the intensity of the light in the blueprint, as you might have guessed. Drag two reroute nodes from the two pins in the function node. This is purely cosmetic. Then drag the mouse off the green ID node and type flow. Select the switch on int node from the list and connect it to the intensity node. Add two pins to the switch node. Drag another spotlight component into the graph. Type visibility and add a set visibility node. Leave the new visibility pin unchecked. This will set the light off. Copy the visibility node. Connect it to pin 1 and tick the box new visibility. This will set the light on. Now we to make some space. We need to check the name of the tag. This can be done with a branch node. First drag the mouse off the pink tag reroute node. Type 2 equal keys. Choose equal exactly string. Then drag the mouse off the red pin and start typing branch. The branch node needs to go between the intensity node and the switch. Finally connect the tag variable to the second pin of the is equal node. Compile and save the blueprint. There is a red message in the results window. We didn't connect the spotlight component to the target pin of the second visibility node. The spotlight should be off by default. Select it in the component list and untick visible in its properties. Change a few more settings for the light. Mobility needs to be set to mobile. Set the intensity to 5000. The default is unitless intensity. In Candela it would be around 0.5 or 1 CD. Reduce the attenuation radius to 500, that's 5 meters. Set the inner cone angle to 30 and the outer cone angle to 60 degrees. The source radius is 5 units or centimeter. Tick, use temperature, and set the temperature to 4000. That gives the light a warm tone. Save and close the blueprint. Drag the blueprint into the scene and place it under the light fixture. The blueprint and the orange box of the variation actor are now in the same place. Press H on the keyboard to hide the variation blueprint. Now you can select the light toggle blueprint. Control and H will unhide all actors and make the variation blueprint visible again. The tag name links the light toggle blueprint to the variation blueprint. We used Light01 as the tag in the Variation Blueprint. Select the Light Blueprint. The tag setting isn't visible in the Details panel. Press Ctrl and E on the keyboard to open the Blueprint Editor. There are little eye icons next to the variable names. They need to be ticked to enable the visibility of the two variables. Save and close the Blueprint. Now you can enter the tag name. I also set the intensity to 1000. Save the level and hit play to test the light. The edit mode shows the name of the editable variation blueprint when you hover over it. 
you can see how it switches from light fixture to the light and to the table. Click the mouse when the name, light, appears. The options to turn it on or off will appear and the light can be toggled. This is the end of this tutorial. You can place the light blueprint multiple times. You only have to give the new light and variation actor another unique tag name. Or you can create your own blueprint by following the same basic rules. Add the UI3 blueprint interface to the blueprint and implement the variations ID function. Check for the tag name. And then use a switch on int node to execute your actions. The next videos will focus on the other features of the UI3 interface.